give them a big round. All right, so our next guest, our next speaker, is going to talk a little bit about rewards programs. How many of you have points with your airlines or your hotels, et cetera, et cetera? Well, the question is, how can you do that inside the blockchain and provide some real value? And um, what's great about Todd is he's actually been in the rewards business for over 20 years. So he knows how it's been done, as we would say, maybe old school. And now they're bringing this new school. And what's great about this is unlike some of the latest things that you've seen online, which is basically it kind of defiles what cryptocurrency and blockchain is all about. The whole idea is getting rid of the middleman, right? And a lot of these new ICOs that you see are really the same old thing. It's lipstick on the same old pig. It's a new insertion of the middleman. And by my definition, it's how are you going to reduce the amount of friction? How are you going to simplify it? And that's one of the things that Todd's going to talk about. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. And first of all, he's a uh, proven leader in the loyalty and rewards industry, currently CEO of rewards.com, so he's a player. He's been driven by his entrepreneurial vision in leveraging over 20 years of expertise. He's created programs for Bank of America, American Express, American Airlines, IHG, many, many others. Again, let's give him a big round of applause. This guy is a player. Todd Rowan. There you are, sir. Thank you. White clicker. Okay. How you doing? I'm sorry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Dallas. Uh, how many of you guys are here from Dallas? I, I love the community here. This is my hometown. In fact, uh, we have offices uh, about two miles down the street here on the south end of the airport. So today, what we want to do is talk to you about, well, let's see if I can get this going up here. There we go. So today what we want to talk to you is about the loyalty industry and how blockchain can ultimately affect you know, this industry. But what we want to do first is we want to give you a little bit of education. Uh, so my name is Todd Rowan, obviously. I've asked Michael Shepard, my VP of marketing, to join me up here uh, as we kind of go through this. So I think Michael is going to take you through... Well, let's see. There we go. All right, got to figure out the buttons down here. So we're going to go through a little bit of the history of loyalty programs, how they got started, and where they originated from. So do you want to pick that one? Absolutely. Thanks, Todd. So, uh, you know, I know when you heard about the topic today, loyalty, you kind of got a, a shiver down your spine because it's just that exciting of a topic, right? I mean, it's just really exciting. Mm -hmm. It's something you really want to talk about. You talk about it at the gym with you and you're the guys while you're working out. You know, it's that exciting of a thing. You know, it's not. It's not exciting. It's not, you know, for me, I actually... I I'm, I, I'm pretty excited about it. I, Todd's excited about it. I, have a, I personally have, like, a love-hate relationship with it, you know, because I, I feel like, you know, I, uh, you know, there's so many opportunities out there. It's, it's almost like a unicorn, right? Like, I know they're out there. I want to try and find one, but I, I, and I think I find it, but as soon as I get close, it's, it's gone. You know, it's not there. It's not really... Uh, it's like a, like a jackalope kind of a thing. Um, so out of, out of curiosity, how many people do have loyalty programs? Be honest. I mean, raise your hand. Any, who's got a loyalty program? Any kind. So if you look around, I mean, it's almost everyone in here. You know, and if you didn't raise your hand, you're, you're a liar. And fortunately, you're, it's Sunday in Texas, so there's like 1,000 churches within like 13 feet of this building. So you know, after this, just go out and find one and get some forgiveness on that. But truly, I mean, it, it, seriously, it, it, programs are everywhere in every industry. They, they cross you know, medical, they cross travel, uh, you name it, they're in those industries. And, and not only that, you know, they, they've been around forever. They've been around for over almost 200 years, over 200 years. Yes. Um, it, it's unbelievable. And, you know, the first one actually started back in 1793, I think, 1793. Um, you know, this little, little shop owner opened up a shop, and uh, he was trying to drive traffic. You know, he tried different things, kind of like us, you know, starting a business, startup. He's trying to, to really make a name for himself. And he, uh, he came up with a, this idea of a, of a copper token to reward uh, his, his, his customers. You know, and so you guys think you know who started cryptocurrency. You actually don't. This guy right here is like the OG of tokens. Like he's the original guy who started like the token system. He, this is it. Uh, so he started this back in 1793. And since then, you know, it really hasn't changed that much. You know, you've got some people who started ticketing and they do certificates, uh, a couple like other things. Green stamps. Uh, stamps. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing about the stamps is, you know, I, I'm, I'm not old enough to, uh, to have these stamp things. But, you know, in 19, what was it, like uh, 30, I think, um, 1930. 
Yep. They started these things called the green stamps, which is like a, it's actually an interesting idea. It was the first program out there that actually kind of uh, universalized the reward system. So basically you go to a grocery store, you could go to a gas station and earn these stamps. And uh, you had this stamp booklet, it had like 1,200 stamps in it. And as you collected these stamps, you could go onto a catalog or, you know, online, well, I guess not online. You go to a catalog or a store and you could redeem these stamps, you know, like 10,000 stamps for like a toaster or whatever you buy back in the 30s, I don't know. Um, so, you know, that worked really well, but, but these, these stamps didn't have any value, right? So after time, you know, inflation happened, and they were around for a long time, like 50, 60 years. Uh, but over time, you know, the economy went down and, and things, prices had to go up. So at the beginning, you know, 10,000 stamps to buy a toaster. After a few years, you had to have 100,000 stamps to buy a toaster. And so the, the value of the stamps was not based on anything real. It was just fictitious. And so to, to be competitive, they had to add more stamps, adjust the programs. And, and it failed because no one had the desire to really work that hard at collecting 100,000 stamps for, for a toaster. So it, eventually, it's going gonna, it's gonna to burn out. Um, you know, and, and like the other thing, you know, in 1980, I think airlines started their first mile program, which, you know, I thought they'd been around for a lot longer than that, but 1980 was the first time they started. And so, you know, quickly after that, you know, other people jumped on. But, you know, as you can see, well, it really I, you know, I remember, the same thing. So on, on the airlines, American yeah. Airlines I love, and, you know, they've been one of our partners for many years. Uh, but, uh, you know, them, I remember, you know, back in the day, it's, it was when they first came out, it was 25,000 miles anywhere in the U.S., right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Now today, you know, I go look at something, and it's, you know, if I can get a seat for 25,000 miles, or 30 or 40 or 50 to get somewhere in the U.S. now, you know, they put a fee on top of it, you know, it's... It's devalued that currency since it originated yeah. tremendously. Yeah, you, you know, I don't fly enough, so I actually just end up paying for the miles. You know, they give me the option to buy an extra 10,000 miles, so I just pay for them because, you know, I really want, you know, I want to sit in the, the, the groundling section. I want to sit right. in the Admiral's Club, so it's worth it because I will yeah. never get 100,000 miles. As much as I want to be a millionaire or a million mile club member, uh, I'll, I'll just I'll you just never get flying. it. You do, you do. I'm not that, I'm not that cool yet. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I mean, nothing really has changed over the 200 years of loyalty. Like, they've really been consistently the same, and it's, uh, it's interesting. So, Todd, you know, can, can you explain to us kind of about loyalty, just kind of the, what it is right now, well, where it's going? Well, I mean, the loyalty industry, you know, it's been growing year over year. Uh, you know, we have an annual rate year over year of 23% of growth. So, everybody's engaging these programs. There's a lot of programs out in the market. 85% or 84% of all businesses have some type of rewards loyalty program. They've got a point program, a bonus program, a perk program, whatever they want to call it. It's, to me, it's a digital currency that's centrally managed. So, uh, you know, 85% of consumers are participating, you know, in loyalty programs. There's Estimated, there's no really good statistics currently in the U.S. Uh, for how many points are distributed every year. It's kind of hard to get our hands around it. But the last statistic and survey that I've caught was about $78 billion worth of points are distributed every year. Worldwide, uh, kind of extrapolating, you know, consumer engagement and stuff, you know, it's 300 to $500 billion. It's a big industry. There's a lot of points going out there. And one of the interesting thing about all these points going out in the market is what they do, since they don't actually have any tangible value, what they end up doing is actually creating liability, very substantial liability on the books of these programs. Uh, Delta Airlines, for example, carries $3.3 billion worth of liability on their books. It's 10% of their corporate liability. Uh, that's huge. So imagine if we can get to a point to where we can start reducing some of that liability, what it does to profitability for them. So, you know, today, you know, we, in the U.S., there is three, three point, uh, we say $3.3 .3 billion, $3.3 .3 billion consumer registrations up there. Uh, the last statistic I just saw uh, yesterday out of the colloquy report, it was $3.8 billion now. So, if you think about that, the U.S. is only, what, uh, 325 million people? That's almost, that's over 10 registrations for every man, woman, child, and baby in the U.S., I mean, that's a lot of your data going out, you know, to these marketers. So the statistic is really, you know, an average of uh, 29 loyalty programs, you know, per household is where it is. So, so Todd, how many, you know, you, you are a, a loyalty ninja, kind of like a Jedi of, you know, loyalty. I so, like loyalty programs, uh, yes. But, yeah, I, I would think so. I would think so. How many do you have? You know, I know I've got far more than 30. How many, how many do you have? Well, you know, I, I like loyalty programs. I sign up for them all the time. And, 
You know, I, I get, you know, I'm probably about average, I guess, in the consumer market. You know, I, I, I don't really know how many I have. You, well, I haven't counted them up lately. Say that. Okay. Okay. So, you know, someone like me or people like here who do, here who don't really, you know, they're not experts in uh, managing loyalty. How do you manage it? Like, what's the best way to, to, to track oh, all it, those it, things? It, it's real simple. I, actually, I, I, I keep them right here. Um, nice. All right. Nice. Let's see. Nice. Uh, okay. So I've got some advantage miles. I got some delta miles. I got some priority club. I got an executive club. I got some star rewards. I kind of like them. Uh, I got some rapid rewards, I got some uh, membership rewards, I got some balance rewards, some total rewards, some pop-up points, my points, gold points, plenty points, race points. I love NASCAR. Uh, I got some Coles rewards, some five-star. Oh, uh, you know what, Michael? I, yes, last, yesterday I was real excited. I went to lunch and I got El Taco. I need to write them down here. So I got some El Taco points, uh, or actually they're beans, they call them. So I think I got 50, and they need, I say I'll need, uh, I think it was 9,950 more, and then I think I get something really great. You see, you have, you need 10,000 beans. What, what, you need 10,000 beans? Yeah. 10,000 10, beans, that's, that's a ton uh, well, of beans. Then, then I'm, that's then a ton I, of beans. I, I'm, I'm gonna get, well, I, I'm, you know, well, I'm gonna get, I, I guess I get a breed or something, but I, it's, it's a lot of beans, but you know what they say, it's you know, magical fruit. Uh, dad jokes, dad jokes, gotta love them. <laughs> so, what, uh, what are you gonna do with those beans? Would you ever actually use anything? Like, what can you actually collect? I mean, all those ro royalty, uh, loyalty programs, like, give me an example of like, something you've actually gotten well, tangible okay. so, from all that uh, stuff. Well, okay, so, a real good example. So last week, uh, I had a meeting up in Denver. And I was able to get a flight about 6 a.m. out on Tuesday. So my meeting was Wednesday at one o'clock. I got myself a flight out at 6 a.m. on Tuesday. And a return flight, uh, I got, uh, I think, at 9 a.m. coming back on, or 9 p.m., you know, coming back on Thursday. So, you know, it was really great. I got to use my miles. I was very excited about okay, that. Okay, so that's you, three days. You're, you're in Denver for three days, back-to-back -back meetings. It was, it was great. It was well, no, the meeting was only an hour, um, you know, up there just meet with a client. But, you know, I wanted to use my miles. I could have got a round-trip ticket for about $350, but I, I really wanted to use those airline miles. Uh, yeah, so that doesn't seem like a great deal. I mean, for 350 bucks, you wasted three days. Well, no, actually, it turned out really good, and I was really excited about it because I got two extra days of hotel points. Oh, it makes it worth it. Yeah, it was awesome. What can you say to that? What can you say to that? <laughs> all right, in all seriousness, guys, if I can get my slides going forward here. All right, let's see. So with all these great things, I mean, we've got a ton of, of, of market share. You know, look at, I mean, like Todd said, it's, just, it's unbelievable how much uh, just growth it's experienced over the years. Um, you know, but despite all, these, all this growth and all this potential, you know, there's a ton of problems that go along with, with, uh, with loyalty. What are some of those, those problems that, you know, kind of are, are common problems with consumers and businesses and, and things like that? Well, in, engagement is always an issue, uh, you know, with reward programs. So it's engagement, it's the you know, consumer privacy issues. There's a lot more consumer privacy laws coming out and affecting loyalty and reward pro programs now. Uh, we hit a little bit you know, on the financial you know, liabilities side of things and the financial liabilities that these programs assume. And then also administrative costs. Our administrative costs in these programs keep rising. It keeps rising from a marketing standpoint, an engagement standpoint. And you know, really what's crazy is this list that I pulled out here, this actually isn't a fake list of programs. This is a, actually a very small list of the U.S. programs that are in the market. Uh, so there's programs everywhere. Everybody's using them. Everybody's, every business is investing in them. Because rewards do work, at least for some businesses. But think about these rewards if we, we can put real value into these. Yeah, so, you know, like Todd said, they, they, they do work. And that's why they're so popular. Right? Everyone uses them. But there's also such a huge breakage between uh, the potential of what they really could bring. I mean, you can see from this, this slide, you know, 53% of people back out of a reward program because it's not giving them what they want. You know, you, you earn all these points and you end up getting something that's completely useless to you. Uh, other people back out because it takes too long to earn points. You know, it takes, um, you know, like the stamp, the green stamps. It took, you know, 100,000 points to earn a toaster. That's not valuable. That's not useful. No one's going to stick around for uh, that long to earn something that has such, such little intrinsic value um, in, the, in the market. Uh, 
So some other problems, you know, like Todd mentioned, you know, financial liability, that's a huge, huge thing for corporations. You know, that's, no company wants to carry that kind of balance on the books. Um, and, you know, companies are always trying to expire points, always trying to find ways, loopholes, so that you can't use your points. You know, it's interesting because companies don't want you to use points. They, they want you to earn points. They don't want you to redeem points, right? right? Common sense. So, you know, they're always trying to find ways to burn up your points and make it really difficult for you to so, consume them. Yeah, you know, one of the biggest conversations that I ha always had with my airline partners is we we're going in and talking about a new program uh, to set up, you know, a new earnings program or redemption program. I would always thought they want more consumers, you know, more consumers to come into the market. Uh, they didn't want consumers. What they really want to talk about is breakage. How do we generate more breakage? So we come up with expiration periods, blackout periods. For, for those of us who aren't uh, uh, loyalty nerds, what's breakage actually mean? So breakage, breakage essentially means is, as a program, I'm going to give you points, send you out in the market with it, but what the last thing I really want to do is bring those points back in. I really don't want you to redeem them because then I could have sold a seat, but I got to give you, you know, put you in it, or I could have sold that hotel room. So, you know, I got to give you a hotel room. So we create these blocks and periods. You know, we create blackout periods. We look at when, you know, the, uh, the census is low for, you know, the flight. We can't get all the seats filled. So those are when we're going to give you blocks of times to, you know, redeem your tickets. You know, those are blackout periods. So it's really about, you know, since that currency doesn't have any value, that point does not have any value wherever it goes out in the world, and it comes back with no value, but it does carry liability. So the other problem is consumer privacy, right? Everyone's got a big concern with that. You know, no matter where you turn on the TV, there's always someone complaining about privacy. And loyalty has a huge, huge issue and and a hold a, a breach that um, opens up when you start using loyalty programs, uh, which a lot of people don't think of. You know, Norton actually said a statement. You know, many people don't think twice about before signing up for a loyalty rewards program. Um, and you can even lump gamification into that because it's ultimately the same thing. But uh, there's a lot of recent concern about loyalty cards and privacy because, you know, what people do, what, what hackers do is they'll, they'll scan databases and they'll get components of your information. And as they get different pieces and components, they can then build a fuller profile of, of, your, of, of you and use that information to, you know, use identity theft, uh, data collection, that kind of thing. And before you know it, you're, you know, your, your identity is ruined because you've signed up for a thousand cards, giving them information. You know, you don't know, you know, Subway, are they secure? Is, is mom's yogurt shop down the street secure? How they're storing your information? So it's a real, real big concern for, for data security and data yep. breaching. Uh, the next one is administrative costs. You know, that's obviously huge, uh, especially for a big company like American Airlines or something like that, where they have to have just departments dedicated to membership management, vendor management, um, overhead costs, marketing these, these benefits, um, and then managing all the complaints of people that come in. I mean, just the management of a, a complaints well, the, alone has got to be right. just over oh, the top. Oh, it, it absolutely is. And your redemption cost, everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, all these problems, you know, there's tons of benefit. All these problems, where do you go? I mean, can, is there a solution out there that, that's available that can kind of weigh out the, the pros and the cons of the kind of current traditional loyalty programs? Well, uh, we hope so. So, the blockchain and uh, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency technology possibly can have a great solution for us. So we know, and we're talking about in the industry a lot about protecting privacy, protecting consumer data. So we can help out the industry in how to protect that consumer data, uh, comply with the new regulations and stuff that are coming along. Administrative costs. We can reduce administrative costs by creating a blockchain protocol where a program can tether in, take care of a lot of the administrative costs of account management you know, marketing management, et cetera, and being able to access a broader base of consumers. Financial liability, by instilling real value into the currency, that currency then comes back to you actually as an asset. It's not a liability, you know, to you anymore. And consumer engagements. I, you know, I had my trip, you know, here to, to London uh, a few, uh, last month. You know, I earned 4,700 miles. Well, the cost basis for the airline on a point, for every point that they put out, is about .0085. So, I mean, that's roughly about $63 or so in points. So, what would I rather have as a consumer? Do I want the 4,700 miles, which I got to get at least to 25,000 before I can get a flight, if I can get the flight, or do I want the $63 that becomes more fungible for me? I can use back with that airline or I can choose to use it at another partner that may be in that airline's network. So putting value into that and removing that financial liability is you know, critical to some of these programs. Administrative cost. 
you know, we've talked a little bit about that, and I'm not going to spend too much time on that because we're starting to run out, and I want to leave a few minutes for questions if anybody has any. Um, so. Yeah, so, you know, it's funny. Um, I, uh, uh, as I was walking through here, you know, thinking about and talking to you guys, different companies, you know, it's, it's really it's exciting to see all the technology and all the solutions you guys are coming up with. And, um, you know, every person I've talked to, you know, they're, they're excited about what they're doing, whether it's taxing or taxes or hotels or, you know, medical. Uh, but when you talk to everyone, you know, they, they're always in the back of their mind. They're trying to figure out how to continue to engage their customers, how to continually work on gamifying their solution or, or building that loyalty. And, you know, the problem is, you know, they, they've got part of the solution, but they're not experts in loyalty, right? You guys are experts in what you do, hotel management or uh, medical management or medical records or taxes, whatever it is. But you also have to now be an expert in loyalty, you know, building this, understand the psychology of that, understand the rewards management of it. And, you know, that just doesn't make sense, right? You guys need to focus on what you're good at and let another company that is dedicated, focused on rewards and knows rewards, an expert in that uh, field, focus on what they're good at. And so, you know, that really I, makes I, it good. I know a company that does that. You do? Yeah, I do. Uh, oh, who? Who? By t I, it might be on the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. Oh, I hope there it is. There you go. Oh, there At we least go. we're not a technology hey, company, rewards. right? rewards.com. So, like... We said before, my name is uh, Todd Rowan. I'm the CEO of rewards.com. You know, Michael Shepard here is our uh, VP of marketing. So rewards.com, we're basically taking the platform and we're tokenizing uh, the reward point. Um, let me flip on the next, next one there. Um, so like I said, we've been a leader in the industry. You know, the previous you know, corporation that I had, you know, we supported you know, these banks, these airlines you know, for, for many, many years. Uh, we've taken that underlying technology, uh, our consumer relationships, our merchant relationships. We have over 7,000 merchant relationships. We have access to millions of products. Uh, we're bringing that into the rewards.com uh, ecosystem and the rewards.com environment. Uh, we're tokenizing you know, the rewards currency. And what that'll do is rewards.com will be a model program as we're building our own protocol you know, out in the future here. And that protocol will be able to help and support loyalty programs so the loyalty programs can come in and white label their currency to that root protocol and take advantage of some of the things that we talked about of privacy uh, financial management, account management, uh, marketing management. So what you're saying is you're, we're building a platform, an ecosystem, and Rewards.com is the first participant of that ecosystem. It, it, it is the first partic participant of that ecosystem. So we're currently entering our private sale. Uh, you know, we have, it's for U.S. accredited investors. It's uh, unfortunately one of the few opportunities for U.S. citizens to participate at this stage and take advantage of a substantial discount. Uh, we'll have a public sale that'll take place to international uh, investors uh, starting about April 15th. And then the new rewards.com market, global marketplace will launch in the U.S. Uh, here in June. And in that once that program is actually launched, there will be you know, a short promotional period you know, that you can come in and buy your uh, rewards currency, uh, just like you go buy your airline points or uh, any other, your hotel points to you know, top off your account to use within the redemption. So within our ecosystem, like I said, we have thousands of merchants. Uh, you know, we send you off to Macy's to shop to you know, buy a pair of shoes. Uh, Macy's will fund us about 5% you know, of that purchase, so if you spend $100, you know, we'll get about $5 you know, that comes back. We'll turn that into your cryptocurrency by buying your currency back off of the marketplace, and you can take that back into our system and redeem it at one of our other merchant partners, take it out for gift cards or products, uh, and take it out to Chili's uh, with our mobile app that'll be out here in June, uh, and you know, redeem it there. Uh, or you can experience, you know, the exchange and go out and trade it, you know, for your, your Bitcoin or your Litecoin or whatever cryptocurrency you like. Um, we look at this environment. One of the things that, you know, we want to help this in our uh, cryptocurrency environment do is bring this stuff more mainstream. And we look at rewards as, one, it fits very well within the ecosystem. Like I said earlier, a rewards point is very, or a, Airline point or hotel point or a point is a digital currency. It's just centrally managed. So as we decentralize this and make this currency more fungible, you know, you can have, you know, your mom or your grandmother come into rewards.com, shop at Macy's, 
earn her rewards token, which is a cryptocurrency, but never really have to think about it. She can turn around and redeem it for something that she likes, or she can come out and understand more about the crypto world. So we look at it as a gateway currency. Uh, so it will help uh, facilitate more people coming into our environment, learning about what the blockchain is, what cryptocurrency is, because ultimately it is going to impact everyone. Uh, I think it's here to stay, and you know, we look forward to being in this market and helping it grow. You know, one thing real quick, I, I want to kind of explain, I think, what's really important, how the token structure works. You know, because during the private sale, we're selling out 400 million tokens, right? Is that right? right? And yep. what happens is once those are sold, as a person then, once the marketplace opens, someone goes out and earns a point. They then, the retailer, us, or another provider, has to go to the marketplace and buy a token to then give it to the person that just earned that token. Is that right? right. Well, so for, so for us, every, everything that we do is already funded. It's as it works today. Uh, Rewards.com is up and live. It's a cash back program. So we, our merchants fund us uh, for sending them traffic and driving traffic to them. So every time we send them traffic, if you make a purchase, you know, we get part of that funding. We're turning that funding into your cryptocurrency. We're turning it into the cryptocurrency instead of a point that we make make up and send, it, send you off with, or you know, cash back, we basically turn it into that rewards token by purchasing it back off the marketplace. So it kind of perpetuates the own cycle, the own ecosystem is it, a closed system, so right, it continues it to feed goes itself. In cycles. And, right. and our, our, general, our general statistics uh, from the history of you know, current programs that we've been running is about every 100,000 shoppers will have to purchase about $5 million worth of currency. And then you can also buy them where? On the MOPA marketplace, right? Just on an exchange. You can then, if you don't want to earn them, you can Absolutely. Do it, go and buy them. So if, if you're looking for that vacation package and you've gone through the, through the program and you've earned you know, enough currency that you're almost at that vac vacation package, you can go out to the exchange, you know, buy some extra token to top off that vacation package, and away you go. Perfect. Great. Awesome. Hey, uh, well, I guess we don't have any time left, but... Um, you know, catch up with me you know, out at the booth. Be happy to answer any questions about the program and what we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you.